I'm a married man, happily so. My lovely wife, uh, Wendy, is one of my greatest supporters. I am single at the moment. I don't have kids. I'm um, single at the moment. I'm single and not going out with anyone. I am currently in a relationship and have been for 40 years. I have a partner. Um, I've been with her for three years. Um, and I've lived with her for about two and a half. Um, not really important to me because of busy working. If I have a relationship, then that's fine with me. <laughs> Romantic relationships are not a big um, priority for me at the moment. Like, I know many autistic people who are in romantic relationships. Some of them with other autistic people, but they could be with anyone. Well, for me, it was for many years not something that I thought was going to be a possibility. And I think the main barrier to that was really the assumptions that people make about people with disabilities and, and also, um, you know, their capabilities of, of being in a relationship and contributing to a relationship. My disability makes it hard to communicate with people at times. I think for me it would be probably being judged and misunderstood. But there's many other ways of living relationships that are not intimate in nature. Acceptance that it is serious by family, friends and society. I kind of feel like I struggled in, you know, growing up with a disability and always second guessing myself and not really having confidence in myself. Um, I almost feel like I was scared to even ask a girl out. We both love uh, similar types of music. The other thing we love, we're both movie buffs and uh, we have some very similar favourite movies and we, we love all the same one-liners in some of those movies. So. We spend a lot of time quoting them and, and laughing about them together. I like doing like little date nights, whether that be going to the movies or you know having a movie night at home. We love racing cars, fixing them. We love just talking about how we got together. Going through puberty and that kind of stuff, you know, kids can be a little bit mean at times and it's confronting and as I said, you know, um, I try and use humour. Quite often when we're out and about in the community, uh, one of the things we do face is that people sometimes don't actually make the connection that Wendy is my wife. They actually think uh, by definition that I'm out and about with a support worker or a friend or a sister or you know something like that but even when we go out and about and we go into shops together uh they'll quite often uh, you know go up to wendy and say how can we help him today which is just uh you know ridiculous and she'll say well you could always ask him <laughs> you know we are not your everyday run-of-the-mill couple. We do do things differently as far as physical intimacy goes. It's about open and honest conversation and I would say that's the case for, for any couple, you know. You can't shy away from it, you just need to work out what works for you as a couple and, and, and be prepared to have fun and experiment a bit. We talk about it and we took our time till we were both ready and we had respect for each other.
when I wasn't really looking for it. I feel the most intimate with my partner when it is, you know, cuddling on the couch or, you know, holding hands and that kind of stuff. Um, and I feel like that's separate very much to, I guess, being more intimate and more physical. Like I wonder if it's because we're still seen as children and developmentally delayed. Some people tell you that you can't do it. Like having a baby, I had so many people tell me this and I think it's a little rude as everyone is different. On some level or another, we all want that incredibly important connection to another person, you know. We're all sexual beings and, and for those of us who aren't, then, you know, that's a perfectly valid choice also. But I'm right there with uh, Natisha. It's about respecting the individual and the choices that they want to make and not making assumptions about people's capability on face value. I think maybe awareness, people assume just because you have a disability, you don't want to be or you can't be intimate. I would like to think it's less than it was, but I think professionals need to realise we are capable of being in a relationship. There is an assumption that people with disabilities may not have the understanding of the significance of sex and the significance of being in a relationship. But with the right support and the right education, that doesn't need to be the case.